Cables and coffee. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to episode nine of Cables and Coffee. We're here with Daryl, our lead engineer. I'm Ross behind the camera. Daryl, what coffee do you have today? How's everyone doing? Uh, today I'm drinking Pignon uh, Medium Roast. Same. Uh, yes. It's quite, it's quite good. Yeah, really enjoying it. Kind of nutty, mm -hmm. kind of chocolatey in a little bit. Oh yeah, it's so yeah. good. Very smooth, very, very good. All right, so tell us a little bit about the cables we're gonna be uh, building today. So going off a little bit of what we uh, did last week, uh, sticking with the IEM uh, type cable, uh, we wanted to do some IEM connections. So in front of us brought a whole bunch of different options. Uh, Here's our two pin silver dragon cable with a pre-molded 2.5. Then we have my favorite, uh, the bronze. These are my personal IMs, got the minion there. Um, this has a pre-molded 4.4. So we have tons of amplifier connections as well. Here's the four, point, uh, the four pin JH audio uh, connection with the base pod. And that's sporting uh, Oyed. Uh, 3.5 gotcha. and uh, there's a pre-molded 3.5 another Oyed and then today on the bronze I'm just gonna be doing a Moon Audio 3.5 nice and on the silver I'm gonna do the uh, Fure Tech 4.4 that one's fancy I really like that one yeah the stainless steel uh, cover and the rhodium plating on the connection so I have two questions of my own Yes, sir. You said base pod. What is a base pod? So they created uh, like it's like a base attenuation uh, within the IEM and this uh, two little potentiometers here. It comes with a little screwdriver huh. to change it. So you can have full base all the way to very diminished base, depending on their model. So it's like a physical EQ in, in, in a way. Yeah, but only for the base frequencies. Only for the base frequencies. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So it's I, actually base as in. BASS pod and not yeah. BASC. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. For some reason, that's where my mind went first. And I don't remember exactly where the cutoff was for that, what, what frequency cutoff was, yeah. but. Interesting. And then yeah. the other question is, do I see some minions on the table there? Yeah. So, <laughs> big fan of minions. Um, I got these made uh, a long time ago. And what, what exact I model them. are they? I don't even think they have these in it. These are JH13s. Okay, cool, yeah. yeah. We sell the JH 16s now. Nice. Yeah. Cool, cool. And I remember there's a uh, 13 V2, but uh, these are these were an old uh, kind of entry level model. Yeah. Back in the day. Love the look. Yeah. <laughs> so what exactly are you gonna build for us today? So we'll start off with the Silver Dragon. Okay. Cool. Um, but like I said, we're gonna be putting on the Fure Tech 4.4 rhodium with the stainless steel cover. And then two pin for the uh, IEM connection. Yeah, two pin connection. Gotcha. Very yep. popular if it's, you know, a, a, wide, a very wide range of IEMs from Empire Years to JH Audio to um, Moon Drop, all, you know, yeah. everything basically. Um, so, yeah, let's get started here.
It's always fun to get the grommet on, <laughs> but once it's on, it's not going anywhere. So what exactly does that grommet do? Uh, strain relief. Gotcha. So it provides a good uh, kind of stiff flexibility to the back of the... Can you show uh, it to us a little closer? Just to, uh, yeah. There you go. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. And the diameter is tight between this and the cable. So it's got a snug hold on the, on the cable. Yeah. And I just trim that grommet enough to get it into the back of the connector. There we go, got a tight fit there. Nice. And I'm gonna cut me some electrical tape. Just like last time, this is for, um, kind of hold its place while I, I uh, spread out the cable and also a uh, clamping surface for the 4.4. That way it won't uh, penetrate the jacket and cause shorting. Yeah. Because of the back of this 4.4 uh, here yeah. is um, the ground connection of the 4.4. Gotcha. Which we will not be using today. Uh, there's no external shielding on this. Here's my lovely little two pin pin out. <laughs> is that something you custom, uh, you custom made for this? Yeah, I just to took a... Is that to test so you can like actually just duck? Yeah, I took like them. a little sample two pin female. Oh, okay. And wired this up. We'll start with the right side. Yeah, so that'll be the negative. We're looking for the right negative right now. And with the BNA conductors, uh, two conductors will be used for each signal signal path. All right, so there's our two right negative leads. Daryl's doing that. Let's uh, go through some chat questions. Oh, we don't have too many questions, but we got Hi Fi Fo Fum is here. He says, ready for the cables. Thanks for joining Hi Fi Fo Fum. Thank you. Somebody said, uh, Unicorn Harry said, this is just coffee. Bye. Well, it's cables and coffee, so too bad you missed out. <laughs> just coffee. <laughs> Carmine DeSanto says, uh, listening to this through my crappy iPods, Gen 1s. iPods or, or AirPods? Because <laughs> AirPods would be even next level <laughs> if we had that involved somehow. Thanks for tuning in, Carmine. Once again, if you've ever, uh, if you've joined us for Cables and Coffee before, uh, thanks for coming back. If you have any questions and you're new to Cables and Coffee, feel free to ask them in the chat. We'd love to answer them as best we can. And if we can't answer them, we'll get Drew Baird, PE, our CEO, to answer them as well at some point later on. And uh, last week, if I remember correctly, Daryl, didn't we have uh, didn't we have someone buy a cable during the live stream? Yes, we did. We did, that was pretty cool. And sent them a nice little uh, package with some goodies and swag. Yeah. yeah, yeah. so if you happen to want to buy a cable today during the live stream, let us know. Uh, we might throw a few little freebies in for you as well. So what you doing now? Okay, so now I've, I uh, found the uh, right positive and negative. Now I've just found the uh, left negative. So I'm gonna go ahead and tend that. All that's left is a left positive. <laughs> the 
got a comment from somebody. Uh, let's see, it says scared says me with my KSC 1500s. <laughs> now those are some nice. Uh, <laughs> Very cool. Yeah. Unfortunately, we can't make a cable for those, right? Because they're aren't they stats? Yes. Yeah. So they uh, and they're hardwired, I believe. But oh yeah, and then scared just followed up and said. Uh, it's, I can't detach its cable, it's electrostatic. Yeah, because I think yeah. it comes with a box, right? To actually power. Yeah, so that yeah. that whole, uh, that's a whole all-in-one system, basically. Um, yeah, those are pretty cool. I know I know Drew actually likes likes the KSC 1500s quite a lot. Um, and I mean, they're pretty, in terms of like portable IEMs, uh, I, think, I think he likes those quite a bit. So a little calm. hope you're enjoying those, scared. <laughs> <laughs> Now we're just gonna tin up the connector here. have the KSE 1500s on my brain so I have a question Daryl yeah you know the answer so what Try. makes with those with those cables for those for that specific style of earphone mm -hmm. what's what makes it um, different from these type of cables exactly like these regular IEM cables so uh, with electrostatics you have to send a bias voltage to excite the panel and then signal signal and across signal. the panel. It, so it excites the panel and then the uh, actual uh, uh, music signal mm -hmm. would go through gotcha. and excite the panel. Where so. these are, uh, what well, depends what kind of IMs you're running as well, um, what kind of technology yeah. they are. So so if, if the IEMs are, or if it's electrostatics aren't excited, <laughs> they have to they have to be excited to for them to work i get it okay that yeah. makes sense so typically you're... i i'm not exactly sure on the technology they use yeah. um that makes sense yeah. though so it's kind of like a two-stage signal process in a way is that kind of what you're saying that's how typical electrostatics work yeah like i said um it's been a while since i've played around with the ksc 1200 or 1500 yeah it's been a while since i've seen one too I mean, they sound amazing, but yeah. Um, okay. So now we're gonna start soldering up the connection. See, um, so this is all experience, right? Um, I cut these and tend them at different lengths, mm -hmm. staggered lengths. So now I can come in, and this is all like uh, just pre measured, I have in my head yeah, yeah. kind of yeah, uh, setting. Yeah. So now I can come in, I'll pull that at a right angle, and it fits perfectly right there. Can you hold that up closer so you can see kind of what you're talking about? Yeah, let me go ahead and pull all of them that way. So now I've pulled them all at right angles oh, okay. and they line up perfectly well, nice. mostly perfectly with the solder Oh, and so the little, the little silver parts on the actual connector mm -hmm. are what you're going to connect those to? Yes. Okay. So I've tinned the pads on the connector. Gotcha. Um, that's satisfying how yeah. they like pointed right to where they're going to go. Yep. <laughs> Like I said, that's all like, yeah, yeah. like you, to your point, uh, muscle memory. Yeah. Um, so now what we gotta do is line them up, apply some heat. And get a good solder connection. Oops. First like, cup of coffee got me a little jittery. Oh, <laughs> some high energy coffee. If you're just now joining uh, Cables and Coffee, welcome. Thanks so much for tuning in. If you have any questions about our cable build process, how we build Dragon Cables, please drop them in the chat below. 
Uh, we are building today uh, a couple IEM cables from our Dragon IEM cable line. So if you have any questions on those, feel free to ask them. But you can also ask any questions about our Dragon cable lineup, and we'll do our best to answer them. So now we have those soldered. Focus. There we go. It's very reflective, all the silver. Yeah. <laughs> I go through and I test my solder connections with my fingernail, making sure I can't break it. Um, <laughs> fingernail test. They're all solid. <laughs> like I said, I clamp down on that yeah. electrical tape wrap, and now all that is solid. Switch over. Is that a new hot glue gun? Uh, it's one I pulled out. I, I forgot how much I, I like this one, even though <laughs> it's very huge. Yeah. Um, up a lot of real estate <laughs> yeah so it's got it heats the glue to a more fluid state yeah so it's kind of easier to work with so i'm just gonna basically paint that on covering all my connections nice we'll let that set for a second before we Apply some Teflon wrap. Get a little piece of that'll shield all those connectors away from the internal of the cover. Yeah. Take uh, the time to line up the fear tech with the grommet. And there we go. We have a 48 Silver Dragon um, IM V2 nice. two pin connection with a 4.4 done. I need to clean up this a little bit. Yeah, the Silver Dragon IM with that fear tech connector just looks so good. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Those would go well with what? Like a pair of. Empire ear, Ears Odin's or, mm -hmm. um, oh man, Legend Evo's maybe. Yeah. Well, for sure. But very cool. All right. So that one's done. Want to build us another cable? Yeah. So we'll go back. Um, kind of down the line maybe. Yeah, yeah like I said, well, like bronze ends up being my favorite because I'm very sensitive to, uh, Silver <laughs> yeah. in the signal chain. Yeah. Um, that's just ooh. whoopsie. <laughs> oh, don't worry, it didn't show up as much on camera. Oh, no, you're good. All right, my <laughs> bad. Uh, um, some good coffee. Yeah, <laughs> got it everywhere. Yeah, um, yeah I, I tend to like uh, bronze and black dragon more. Now, the black dragon is kind of a mixture between the silver and the bronze, as it is a silver plated. Uh, copper wire mm -hmm. and all of these have the same type of construction where it's a conductor uh, twisted into four uh, pairs gotcha. and then the pairs are twisted uh, so we actually have a question here from DM who asks is there any difference between the sound quality and capabilities of two pin versus MMCX Ooh, uh, yeah I don't even Sound quality, sound quality would be hard to uh, um, quantify. Through yeah, through yeah, through yeah quantify. That that's a good word. Yeah. yeah. Um, reliability wise, uh, I think MMCX has gotten a lot better. When it first came out, there was a whole lot of tolerance issues with it. Like you couldn't use this cable on this IEM because this one was 2% off this way and the other one was 2% off that way. So oh. then it's a 4%, yeah. you know, uh, just tolerance issues. And um, I think that has gotten a whole lot better over time. So reliability wise, uh, two pins has a better track record than MMCX. But I, like I said, I think it's getting immensely better yeah. over the years because you, know, you have a lot of failures, you figure out how to not have any of those yeah, failures. Exactly. 
and just in regards to what we offer, uh, we do currently offer two pin and four pin connections. Um, and we have uh, MMCX connections in the works for yes. uh, these IEM cables. So stay tuned for that. Yes. Hoping, hoping to launch those pretty soon, I think. Yeah, speaking on that as well, um, we took a lot of time finding the next MMCX connection the connector yeah. because of aforementioned uh, uh, issues. Yeah, because we had trouble with those in the past, right? With just the oh, reliability. Yeah. So yeah. next time, next time we do MMCX, we got to do it right. Make sure that it's as reliable as possible. And then you even get down to different metal types. So I forgot which IEMs it was and which cable it was, but because they were two different materials, they would almost weld together uh with the oxidation from sweat and humidity from skin oh, uh, from, your, from your ear <laughs> yeah so you just, they'd eventually just become attached cables <laughs> yeah and then when you eventually could get them apart you would destroy the female mmcx on the im yeah um yeah it's like i think it was like a nickel plating and and something else and yeah they yeah. they like borderline welded <laughs> that's crazy uh, in terms of other IEM connections, let's see what else are there. Is there's the uh, isn't there the JH Audio like seven pin weird crazy one? Yeah, the seven pin. I and we don't make those. I don't no, think, so. I don't know if they're even continuing with that. I'm not sure. Yeah. I don't, I don't, so those are the only the, the big say. three in terms of IEMs is two pin, four yeah. pin, and MMCX right now. Yeah, and then. I forgot who's doing the IPX, the little tiny, tiny connection. Um, is that 64? Maybe 64 yeah. audio. Gotcha. Well, hope, hope we answered your question, DM. If you have another one, feel free to drop it below. Yeah, I think one of the biggest issues with the MMCX, going back to that as well, is you know it was, made, it was originally made for like uh, little antenna connections, so it's supposed to be like plug it in and it never moves. But the movement with the MMCX, because it's in your ear, the cable's moving, yep. it's unplugged, it's replugged, uh, that created some issues. Okay, so um, kind of more of the same, um, just a different connection. We're gonna go, and this is, is this the four pin? Or no, wait. There's another two oh, pin. Still, sorry, another yeah. two pin. Um, bronze, we don't carry bronze in four pin. No. So bronze is only two pin at the moment? At the moment, yeah. It will be available in MMCX eventually. Great, so. cho great choice for the Sennheiser IE series, mm -hmm. right? They do mm -hmm. uh, MMCX. I know Meze does a lot of MMCX connectors, so I think we're, we're excited to, to be able to make IEM cables for those those uh, cable ranges and brands. Yeah. And we have a lot of um, inquiries about that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So don't worry, we are listening and we're working hard to get that. So I found uh, right negative again. I'll strip those all the way. And the other one that's wrapped with it is the right positive. and get those. So in terms of these braids that we have for the IEM and portable cables, mm -hmm. um, are all the different dragons, are they all the same number of cables wrapped around each other or is it different numbers for? No, it's all the same. So all it's same. all eight conductor, eight conductor and four conductor pairs. And then just different cabling inside. Now switching over to our left, find the negative one on this side. So 
with this being a single ended connection, um, once I get, I will, I'm tying the negatives of uh, left and right. Go ahead and strip left positive. Electrical tape lands down on our crimp. I'll flush cut that uh, ground, the two negative connection. Here, put it more in the center of the of the lens. There you go. There we go. Okay. Yeah. Get that a little bit. Yeah, there. And there's our ground connection. Nice. Yep. And so this is one like uh, since this is an unbalanced connection, this is one less connection on the connector itself. Right? Yeah, yeah. So it only has three. So the yeah. the shared negative, the ground, the right positive, and the right. I mean the left. Same thing here. Nice. Uh, bronze two pin IM with uh, Moon Audio 3.5. There we go. There we go. <laughs> Focus is giving us a run for the money today. There yeah. <laughs> Then I, we might as well go through this because we get some questions about it. Um, I know we mentioned it on our website, but we got time. Yeah, so. let's do it. Um, so I, how do I connect these to my two pin IM? So on, uh, on the connector itself, we have the little triangles uh, here. A little arrow kind of? Yeah. And then uh, it's stamped on the sides R for right and L for left. So this is my right IM. It's got the red uh, printing uh, with it facing like 
this. Uh, this is up. Yeah. We want the arrow on the top connection. And it just slides in like that. And then it can wrap over then, your ear and around the back, right? Yeah, and we had the memory wire in there. So that way, when once you set it, you can set it to where this will go around your ear. And then when you pull it off, it'll be ready for next time. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, easy rule of thumb is if the, if the connector, when you connect it to your IEM is pointing down, mm -hmm. then like if the memory cable is pointing down, then you yeah. know you, you put it on backwards. Yep. And same with the left, we have the L, we have the arrow. I'm just gonna plug that in like this. Now, what do you do if uh, your IEMs, for some reason, don't have a left or right noted? Ooh. <laughs> um, Would there be an easy way to know? Yeah, because you could tell, uh, like these, uh, these are the Rosies. These are discontinued, I believe, from JH Audio. They're not marked uh, left or right. Now, I know from experience that the, uh, the Flying Lady is mm. the right and the Astel and Curran is the left. Oh, okay, so this was a collab between those yeah. two companies. Yeah. But how you could tell is, you know, kind of base it off of an ear. <laughs> yeah. So you want this to be down in your ear. Yeah. And that's clearly not going to work on the, on the, other side the left side because <laughs> you want the connection facing forward because the way your ear, you know, is kind of tilted yeah. naturally forward. So that's how you could tell uh, with those two. Good advice. Yeah. Thank you, Daryl. <laughs> <laughs> I try. <laughs> so we've built the Silver Dragon IEM and the Bronze Dragon IEM. Yes. Um, can you tell us just a little bit more about what, what else you have on the table here just one more time? Yeah. So um, get this stuff out of the way. Cable City up in here. Yeah. <laughs> so we have our... The bronze that we just did, the two pin with the 3.5, this would be your most universal amp connection. Um, so our bronze is uh, pure copper. And then if you want a little more mix of uh, both worlds, I guess you could say, uh, the black dragon is our silver plated copper. Okay. And this has a 3.5 OE8 with the um, two pin connection. Gotcha. And then our pure silver cable has the Silver Dragon. And this also has two pin with the 4.4. And in every single one, we do offer pre-molded connections. And then, uh, of course, solderable connections. And we have, we have even done, I don't know if it's on the website as an option, but we can even do like full size four pin XLRs oh, wow. as a connection. Because one guy, he was uh, mixing and mastering yeah, and so he actually would connect it, connect it to his desktop setup oh, nice. with a four pin XLR, <laughs> and uh, go that route. So we can do it if you want us to. If you want us to connect, get a big XLR connector for your IEMs. Yeah. I've done a quarter inch as well. <laughs> nice. Um, <laughs> it's fun seeing a quarter inch on a <laughs> cable like this. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> How about that? And then of course we do offer uh, adapters with the same. Uh, type of wire yeah so you know you could get a 4.4 and then do an adapter for like home use yeah if uh you wanted to go a little bit longer or you had another connection yeah but remember the base cable to your im would always have to be balanced unless you're doing all single-ended okay. that way we could make the adapters from single-ended to balance um going to the ims cool looks like we've got another question here from dm as well yeah uh, asking how to find the right cable that suits the IEM. So that's a that's a question that depends on the user, right? Yes. So um, with if we're talking, uh, we have a couple we have a couple guys here that uh, will answer questions online. So if you go to our contact us form on our uh, Moon Audio Moon Audio.com and uh, submit there, tell us about what kind of music you listen to which IMs you have, which uh, player you have, or which source you have, and we can help yep, kind of yep. push you in the right direction with that, or yep. you know, give you the options of, this is gonna give you this, this is gonna give you that. Um, instead cool. of just generally speaking, like, you know, copper is yeah. gonna give you a more warm sound, yeah. silver is gonna give you more analytical. Exactly. Um, yeah. 
because everyone hears differently. And I think, yeah, I think kind of, and it, and it matters, it matters too, if you want, like, if you're trying to achieve a neutral sound, then that's, you would want to pick a certain cable. Mm -hmm. But if you're trying, like, if you want something that's the most analytical it can be, or the warmest it can be, yeah. you know, then you would choose a different cable. So maybe talk, talk about that for a second. Like, for sure. Like that, I mean, that's why I prefer bronze. Cause I have, I have some, you know, in my younger, stupider years, I, uh, <laughs> have damaged my hearing. I still listen to music way too loud. And I have to at this point just to get a full kind mm -hmm. of frequency uh, presentation. Yeah. Um, so I know I'm further damaging my ears, but you know, it is what it is. <laughs> and uh, that's why I prefer bronze because my hearing damage is a lot on the, um, the higher frequency side. That's why um, cymbals like really cut through my head yeah. and it's annoying. So that's why I tend to always choose a copper based cable. Um, well, not tend to, I definitely choose a yeah. copper based cable for everything <laughs> yeah. uh, from speaker cables at home to IM cables to, uh, headphone cables as well. Yeah. And for example, if you had like an analytical IEM and you wanted it to be a little warmer potentially, mm -hmm. yeah. then you would get a certain, which cable would you get for in that case? Uh, bronze. I would yeah, definitely so you get the bronze just yeah. like you, but like if you had a warmer IEM and you wanted it to be more analytical, you would probably go to the silver. Yeah. Go to silver. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. That's kind of a way to do it loosely, but as always, like Daryl said, if you want some personalized recommendations, just reach out to us on our site and we can help you out. For sure. Thanks for your question, Dan. Thank you. Yeah. Well, I think, uh, is that about wrap it up for today, Daryl? Yeah. Um, I think we've gone over a lot of IEM cables, so thanks for bringing them all out and showing us kind of the range here that we can do, so. Yeah, and, and none of these today were specifically built for a uh, customer, so. What would happen after this, they would get tested both uh, with IEMs and then on our tester board that yeah. we've showcased before. Yeah. And then they would get cleaned up um, and bagged, uh, you know, wrapped. Yeah, made all pretty. Yeah. <laughs> and then go out to whoever. Yeah. So if you happen to buy a cable uh, after watching this video, let us know. We'll throw some swag in a bag for you. Yeah, swag in a bag. <laughs> swag in a bag. And uh, we really appreciate everybody tuning in to today's episode of Cables and Coffee. Yeah, thank you all. Uh, and we will see you next week, or sorry, two weeks from now for yes. episode 10 of the series. So Very nice. The finale to season one. <laughs> see you then. Bye, y'all. Take it easy. Bye.